begging is the biggest complaint that tourists have around, about Dublin, according to some recent reports we've been hearing about. So, Paddy O'Gorman, yeah. well, what have you been finding out about it? Well, yeah, it was widely reported that this is what tourists were saying. Actually, it was one of those stories took off on its own. Falcher Ireland never put out any such statement. And uh, next thing, there was councillors and so on, and there was, you know, people getting being contacted for uh, for comment and so on. I'm just checking on their website. All the Falcher Ireland, they're saying this morning is, yes, we have... Um, how we put it, that uh, concerns have been raised with us by some members of the hospitality sector, but there was no particular report came out to okay, say it was I that suppose half half, there's yeah. no doubt there's a lot of begging going on oh, in the streets is. and people and, will have noticed that. Yeah, and absolutely. And you look, especially with the warm weather now, Dublin City Centre, Temple Bar and the other streets, there's wonderful street life at the moment. And everybody's sitting out and this Irish people have a good reputation, I think, for friendliness and for um, being uh, informal. And it's OK to talk to a stranger. Of That's course. one of the great things about <laughs> Irish culture. I think some people forgot. But is it, no, it's not rude. But to my mind, John, and I, you're, like you, I spend an awful lot of my life talking to strangers. I've spent my working life doing it all the time. But um, I think in the public street is the place to talk to strangers, not when people are sitting having a pint or having a meal or whatever. That to me is rude. It's not acceptable. So I went out among the tourists with my dog, an essential piece of equipment there. <laughs> and every one of that, without exception, every tourist you'll hear from here were people who first of all petted my dog. And so I went around after bed beggars had been around by the various tables and so on. They'd say, oh, a cute little dog or whatever, um, where, where they'd put it. And then I got speaking to them. So tourists told me about their experience of beggars. We've had one beggar come by two times in the past hour begging for stuff. And the first time we told him we didn't have anything and then he came back again. Well, he was polite. Yeah, yeah he was polite. He was What's humble. He... So he was polite. He was, And when we told him no thank you, he, he left us alone. Yeah. Where we come from, there are people like that in our downtown area, so it doesn't bother me, but I don't like it. To sit outside of a place in peace would be nice, though. It, it would be nice. I would prefer that they not do that. A young lass come asking for money and when we said no she got a bit verbal with us and called us uh, dirty foreigners, they were his exact words. Dublin woman, was she by her? Well, she she was definitely Irish, Irish. yeah. I'm sorry to hear that you were insulted. Does that upset you to be insulted by beggars then? I suppose it does because we're earning us money. Yeah. And, and they're begging to get money. We had a lady approach us and offer us a rose, which she thought was very nice. But then as soon as we took it, she was she had a hand right money. in our face. And yeah. It seemed like a nice offering. Like nice She placed gesture. it in your hand and was like, for you, for you. It seemed yeah. nice. Very open gesture, very welcoming, and then put it in our hands. And nice. then her facial expression just changed, and it, she put her hand yeah, out. And then when we said no, she just... It initially seemed like it was just a gift. And then yeah. she was like, money. And we were like, oh, no thanks. <laughs> oh, no, no, probably not. No, don't. <laughs> <laughs> she handed it back and walked away. And then it happened to us again, a man, and we were just like, no, <laughs> no yeah, thanks. We were like, please get away from us. A rose again. A rose yeah, again, yeah. Yeah, Romanian gypsies. Yeah. It should have been obvious, but we were yeah, just in our own little like, world. Oh, like, oh, how nice. Yeah. It happened to us when we were near O'Connell Street, and then the second yeah. time it happened, we were closer to Temple Bar. But and how many days have you been here now? Two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we arrived yesterday. Just outside this pub, a woman came over to us saying that she was a month pregnant and asked for 15 euro. She had very black teeth methadone yeah yeah and she was saying that she didn't drink drink any alcohol or have any uh, take any drugs you don't believe that no it's not at all i just thought i'd have any euro left but it doesn't really bother me Okay, lots of it's quite common though, Patty, isn't it? Oh, it is, yeah. and like that woman. Funny, I mean, they're they're a day trip over from Hollyhead. She and her friends were go to Dublin for uh-huh. the day, whatever. But a lot of people saying, "Look, we know it." They they are one thing I liked is tourists are much more streetwise than I might have feared. They know what it means when somebody has black teeth from the methadone, and so. They, and another thing I was pleased at is you don't see it around the ATMs now, um, which is, seems to be good. The guards seem to be cracking down on that. So I thought to myself, are beggars being moved? Are they being arrested? Or so did uh, you? Mean- any beggars I did. I started talking to beggars. Um, this man from uh, Italy told me he's standing outside a restaurant on Exchequer Street begging from customers and passers by. Spanish change, madam, please. Spanish change, please, sir. You're begging here on the side of the road. Um, do you beg from tourists or Irish? Irish. Because the tourists are less kind than Irish people. Mm-hmm. Irish people are more kind. They, they understand where we, the background of the homeless people and they try to help you better than. Uh, the tourist. Do the guardi ever move you on? Oh yes, constantly, constantly, because 
It's against the law, but I am a foreigner and I right. don't get no benefit on this country. Should you not be working then? Yes, I've been trying to, to look for work and now I've got an accommodation with Peter McFerry Trust. One step at a time, next step will be my work. So the guards, have they moved you on yet today? Today twice and I'll come back again. They keep saying to me, if you see you again, well, I will arrest you, so I have okay. to be careful. This is an Irish person. So you got to ask him? Oh, yeah, of course. Please, sir, could you spare any change, sir? Thank you, sir. Do you think tourists can find it frightening to be um, approached? No, because the way I say it, I did the nice and polite, you know what I mean? If you just say no, I still say thank you anyway. He seems very polite. Very buddy. polite. And he could take no for an answer. And he stood back. I still felt he's standing outside a restaurant there. And I said, do they mind? Oh, they have asked me to move away sometimes, you know. But OK, I, I don't understand what's the story behind that man. He says, I get no welfare because I'm foreign. Actually, if you're a resident for any time, you will get money. So if he'd been okay. working. So I don't know what's behind that. Do you that. think he or other beggars are making money from tourists? Uh, well, there certainly are some because there's a lot of the tourists. They're not only quite tolerant to beggars. They're also generous to beggars. And people feel they want to do their best. Again, this is... Um, uh, tourists ar- ar- around the-, the street life of Dublin. I've seen one, and he was really nice. He held up his cup and kind of shook it, and that was it. Did you give him something? I did. What you give him? I don't know. Some of this, some of this play money. If I walked around Boston, I'd see a lot more in the course of a day than I have here. We've had a few today, just been sat here enjoying a pint. You say you got a spare bit of change, and you say, nah, like, oh, sorry, no change on me, and move on. It's just like any other any other major city, like Leeds, where I'm from. You get beggars over there, exactly the same. They don't really bother me, so yeah, it's fine. I really haven't have been bothered by them. I feel sorry for them. The one lady, she was kind of more out of it than anything, like uh, on drugs or whatever. She asked me if I had any spare change, and I gave her some, and she seen me having a cigarette, and then she asked me if she could have a cigarette. So I gave her a couple of cigarettes. We have the same thing in Canada, in Toronto. I go to malls and the beer store all the time, and they're... They're there. They're they're asking you for spare change. I see the beggars. Most of them are sitting there and holding the cup to get some some money, but uh, they are not uh, aggressive. So it uh, doesn't matter to me. I come from near Düsseldorf, and there are in in Germany there are a few more. A few moments ago, there was a man here, but he was very polite. If uh, I could give him some money mm-hmm. and help him, I said no, and he went away. And where you're from in Mexico, do you see beggars? Yes, common as well. You've just given some money to that beggar there, yeah? Yes. I like to support them. Uh, I have empathy for the beggar on the street. You gave her a euro or something there? Two euros. I'd rather do that than, than pay some charitable organization that has. I'd rather give it direct. We have more back home in the States. Back home, they'll be on street corners by stoplights and they'll hold signs up, whether they're veterans or homeless. So Dublin isn't particularly bad then, in your opinion? Not that we've seen, no. We like it here. Love it here. Glad to hear it. And tourists on the street of Dublin, they're talking to Paddy O'Gorman. Thanks, Paddy. I'm joined on the line by Fianna Fáil councillor Dahi de Rocha. He chairs Dublin City Council's Joint Policing Committee. And um, Councillor de Rocha, we heard from tourists there about uh, beggars. Are you hearing it from tourists or from residents of Dublin? Good morning, John. Um, I suppose we're hearing it right across the board. We saw the Falsha Ireland report that was published last week, which highlighted this. And I suppose this reinforces the point of um, we commissioned a study last year and Dubliners were saying exactly the same thing. 82% of Dubliners that were, um, were saying begging is on the increase, that they're seeing it more. Um, the facts bear out that to, um, aggressive begging was up about 200% in 2017. So yeah, no, it's coming from it's coming from yourselves. You just heard from the report there from tourists. It's coming from Falch Ireland, and as I said, that report that we commissioned, carried out by the Anna Liffey Project, um, said pretty much the same thing. Right, and I know Paddy was raising questions about that that report, but we've heard from tourists that it is happening. I'm wondering though, uh, Dahi, do you think that Dublin is better or worse for begging, or is this just something that happens in prosperous cities right around the world? It does, it, without a shadow of a doubt, it happens in cities right across the world. Um, you say, is it better for worse? I, I personally think it's worse for the city. Um, we're encouraging people to come here. We're encouraging it's high It's worse in pro- Dublin, though, than other cities across Europe, I'm wondering, or elsewhere in the world. Well, I, I don't think... I'm pretty sure there's, there's begging goes on in every city, but I'm not saying it's better or worse. I'm saying it's a problem that we specifically have in Dublin, especially when we look at things like our nighttime economy that we're looking to do, John. So, And we heard like, of some very, fairly polite people, including a man begging himself, not really bothering people. He was asking, are you hearing about more aggressive begging? Well, you see, what I would say, our study showed us that there's two types of begging. So the first one is 
people on the streets that would traditionally be there due to social circumstances, so it might be alcohol or drug addiction or they might be homeless, etc. But then we also have the coordinated, more professional begging, which is being conducted by Eastern European gangs. And what they do, they meet early in the morning, they head off on the, in teams to certain locations. You see other people with faking injuries, you see maybe even a shift change. So you do have professional begging, and then you'd have, as I said, what we'd consider when we think of begging, somebody who's on, on the streets due to social, social circumstances. And we've heard of, well, anecdotal evidence about professional begging or groups or gangs right across the country. What are you proposing in Dublin? You want a task force. How would it work? Well, that's it. I, I think we need to bring the likes of Dublin City Council together, HSE, bring together the outreach services, just one to make sure, you see, as I said, this is carrot and stick approach, okay? So we need to tackle the people who are on the streets due to social circumstances. So looking at outreach services, ensuring that there's sufficient day and nighttime services for those types of people, but also then that the Gardaí are given given more powers, I suppose, to go after those the, the more professional begging. And I said... This isn't something that's been looking at, looked at by anybody. It's kind of just accepted, like you said, because this goes on in cities. We just have to accept it. I think we need to really, really tackle this because, like, it, it's it's really harming the city. Falcher Ireland proved that out. That, that, that piece there by Paddy, we can hear what's happening there, you know. It's like where we leave it for now. Dahi DeRosha, thank you very much for joining us from Dublin City Council's Joint Policing Committee. Thanks also to Paddy O'Gorman. It's a minute past 11 o'clock. It's time to go to the newsroom now. And Susan Jackson. 